Hey, everybody. Let's jump in and talk about one of my absolutely favorite topics, which is metabolism and its association with weight, meaning if we can find ways to remedy, to repair, improve our body's metabolism, we are going to have a great shot at either maintaining healthy weight, losing weight, or in some cases, actually gaining a healthy body mass. So let's talk about this. I'm going to share my screen and let's go through this presentation together and have a good time doing it. What do you think? Okay. So what we're going to talk about today is, like I said, we're going to surge, meaning we're going to improve our metabolism such that we lose weight. So let's make a few, I guess, definition points here. Let's talk about what these things are. First, uh, what is our goal? What are we really trying to accomplish in this? Number one, we want to increase metabolism. If we're speaking of weight loss, <clears throat> or if we're just talking about metabolism in general, number one, we want to increase our body's metabolism. And we're going to go through that in just a second. We want to increase or how we eliminate waste in a healthy way. And we're going to talk about our, our, our improving our nutrient absorption. These are three critical components to healthy weight, healthy body mass. Like I said, in some cases, that's gaining weight. In some cases, that's maintaining weight. And in other cases, that's losing weight. So that's what we're going to try and solve for today. And the reason I say solve for is because in a lot of ways, uh, by this definition, metabolism is a process of systems. It's a, it's, a, it's a way that our body, our cells, our organs process and utilize everything from food to energy the elimination of energy, et cetera. So it's really an entirely big system. And oftentimes people think of metabolism as, oh my goodness, that's how fast I burn calories. That's how fast I'll burn this slice of pizza. Let's say I love pizza. That's how fast I'm going to burn and use this. And if I can increase my metabolism, I can burn this faster and I won't gain as much weight. And really it's much more complex than that. So just as an example, Metabolism is really three main things. It's the conversion of food to energy. It's the conversion of for food or fuel into the building blocks so that we can make our proteins, our lipids, and our nucleic acids so that we can build things like our neurotransmitters and all those hormones and things that are super, super important. And then the last is how we eliminate all the waste from those earlier processes. Does that make sense? You can see it's a it's a system. And in some cases, people think, well, if I can increase my metabolism, I can eat this pizza faster. It won't, it's not going to make as many calories in my body, or I won't, or I'm going to burn them faster. And maybe on the front end, that's a person's issue, right? Like maybe nutritionally, that's their problem. Another person may be doing very well on this front or middle section of the metabolism cycle, but their elimination of waste is actually an issue. Uh, so we're going to go through why solving for this is critical. All right. So what makes up your metabolism? It's really three core things. And we're going to go into the next slide here in a second where I'll break it down a little bit more. But basically you have exercise, which is those moments where you're physically doing something to get to point A to point B. You're on a treadmill. You're jumping in your car and you forget something. You run back in the house real fast and you're scrambling around and you're doing something that's exercise, that's aerobic, that's pushing the body. The next is, is adaptive thermogenics, meaning it's not really exercise, but you're, it's, it's sitting right here at the table, moving your arms. You're doing things that are kind of thermogenically making the body have to use or utilize um, some aspect of calories to generate energy, meaning you're using sugar to generate energy, and the energy then is translated into ability to move, right? And then the last is our basal metabolic rate. And let's talk a little bit about that a little bit more in depth. What that means is if you look at that larger section, which is about 70% of, of our metabolism, that means that our muscles, our fat mass, our remaining 31% of our body, that's what's making up most of the chunk of our body. And if you look over at our metabolic rate, those same sections tend to dominate uh, what's using energy. Our brain, of course, which isn't a heavy body weight piece, uses up 17% of the, 
of the energy that we're that we're trying to accumulate right like the the carbohydrate or the sugar that's moved into goes through the glycolysis cycle and you you build atp and that energy that little those pieces are broken down and used in this percentage in this wheel the brain is using about 17 percent muscles about 20 and what's critical about this is that some of these things we we really can't change it's not as though you can go in and and shift your digestive basal metabolic rate too much. You can't shift your brain, of course. You can pretty much help the liver to be more efficient so that it, it functions a little bit more healthy. And you can definitely improve muscle size or mass or functionality. So we're really gonna be focusing on the muscular piece, not like I'm saying everyone has to go be a bodybuilder, but I'm saying we're going to talk about the muscular piece because that's something we can control. So we have four options if we're trying to solve for an increase in metabolism and a loss of excess weight on the body, meaning a storage of fat, let's say. Number one, we can increase muscle. We can eat more protein and fiber, which helps in the digestive piece, remember. We can increase our non-exercise activity, meaning those things we're kind of doing throughout the day, remember, that aren't put on the gym shorts and run down the road and take a jog. These are our moments where we're sitting at the table and we're doing something, but instead we can now kind of lift our body up and down. We can, we can stand up more often from our chair if we're working. We can eliminate our chair altogether and stand at our desk for, a, you know, for a certain periods of time throughout the day. And then lastly, we can improve our waste elimination. So we have four options. The reality is we have to do all four. <laughs> that's just the reality. We, we can't solve for one piece of this equation and forget the others. We're, we're trying to utilize this whole thing as a structure. So if we start and we say, for example, my goal in increasing my body's metabolism is to have a healthy body mass, meaning I want to lose weight or I want to be more lean. I want to have more energy to be able to do things with the kids or grandkids or whatever it may be. We have a couple options. Number one, remember if we go back to providing nutrients to our cells so that our body can create hormones and neurotransmitters, we have one option, which is like magic pill, pill number one. I don't know anything about this company. Um, and one option is, hey, we make a product that's going to help you just lose fat. Or we can choose what I consider to be healthy, organic, and natural options that are going to provide the body with specific precursors, minerals, vitamins, different essential oil compound, compounds that are going to allow the body to achieve a shift in metabolism. You can clearly see I lean away from magic pill or potion stuff. Why? Because you're not solving for the whole equation. All you're trying to do, well, number one, I don't even know what's in it. But number two is that really what you're saying is, this stuff is going to get rid of fat, which is going to make me happier. And in the end, it doesn't work that way. So I'm not a fan of that. So we're going to choose side on the right <laughs> to do things in a healthy way. All right. So we've made a choice. We've said, let's use healthy supplements. We're going to do some increase in our physical activity. We're going to use some essential oil compounds. What do we do now? Like, how do I use it? What's that? What am I going to use that for? All right. Let's start with the thing we can control again. We're going to start with increasing energy output, which then by default is going to use more of the fat reserves in our body. Does that make sense? How does that work? Well, for example, by simply utilizing peppermint essential oil, the menthol and the peppermint, and adding a little to your water, two, two three drops, we're not talking much, and you drink that a few times a day, what actually is going to happen is our body is going to be able to deliver more oxygen in this process at the point in where it's really critical. So on the left-hand side of this, you have sugar. It goes into the cell. Once it's in the cell, it goes into this space where it's going to start to be worked on and a chemical reaction happens where it shifts. You know, we're using oxygen and it creates carbon dioxide and we get these a shift in that sugar molecule as it's used with oxygen. Oxygen is critical. 
because we, in the presence of increased oxygen supply, whether that means you're outside you know, running and your, your chest opens up and you're breathing more deeply, or you increase your physical activity a little bit around your desk, whether you stand and stretch your arms and breathe more deeply, you're providing more oxygen so that the mitochondria can actually produce more energy. And remember, every time we produce more energy, the body is going to utilize its stored energy to compensate for that because it wants to be able to produce more energy. These are going to work no matter what. These little mitochondria are going to work 24 hours a day, seven days a week, whether you're giving it enough oxygen or not. And in the lack of oxygen side of this equation, here's where things start to become a problem. Because instead of on the bottom, as you see, where it's producing 30 to 32 units of ATP or energy, without oxygen, you're getting maybe two or four or some variable, right? You're not getting much. I mean, that's a factor. That's a huge factor. 15x in this case. And so in, in, when you look at that, that means that those extra pieces of this equation have to be turned into something else. And in this case, in energy, this creation of energy, they're turned into lactic acid, which is a big issue because lactic acid is what creates muscle soreness. It creates those aches and pains. And in excess, it creates inflammation chronically, which means all the time these are working 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're building up sore muscles, sore tissue, and by default, more inflammation at a cellular level. Nobody wants that because now you hurt, now you feel crummy. And remember, that means it's not asking the body to draw on its reserves. Does that make sense? So solving for problem number one, we have to deliver more oxygen to the cells. Again, that means increasing physical activity throughout the day. Get rid of your chair, stand up at your desk, move your body, stretch. Do just simple little things where you're increasing oxygen delivery to the body. That's huge. You can also use things like peppermint essential oil. Just put it in your water and drink it. Put it on your hands and breathe really deeply. Why? Because it activates the pulmonary, the lungs to open up. You'll see when not, you trust me, when you use it, you'll see what I mean. And they open up, you're breathing more deeply. If you do that 10, 15 times a day where you're just putting a drop or two in your hands, breathe real deep breathe in more deeply, you're going to get a result. It's awesome. Okay, so when we increase oxygen to the cell, we gain energy and burn more fat. And we decrease inflammation, critical. Remember, an increase in inflammation causes the body to re release certain types of hormones, which tell the body to store more fat. So we inflammation is bad news, we're, right? right? We, we're trying to solve for that part of our equation. So if we can increase our oxygen supply to the cells, we get more energy, which means we decrease that inflammation or lactic acid chronically, which is awesome. Okay, so now we've increased our energy output. Now let's absorb nutrients. This is critical, remember, because, for example, in the one that I just said, if you have, let's say, for instance, that you have inflammation, being caused in this process, the body uses certain hormones to regulate that inflammation. Well, those hormones can't even be built if our intestinal health is wrong or if we have inflamed intestinal tissue. Make sense? If our intestinal tract is inflamed and unhealthy, we're really at a deficit now because now we can't make the neurotransmitters or the hormones necessary at a sufficient level, I should say, in order to have a healthy system. That's a big problem. So we have to solve for this part now. So there are certain things that we can do that we know we've been, we've seen these pictures 70 million times, right? Like there's the, there's the picture of a Twinkie or there's a picture of a slice of pizza, or of course there's a person like, oh, I chose an apple, <laughs> right? It's like, there's days you want pizza. I get it, have a slice of pizza once in a while. But there are certain foods that we know are going to increase our metabolic rate. And those foods are foods that are high in fiber. It's extremely important that we use high fiber foods. 
because the benefits of high fiber foods are the following. Look at this list. They decrease harmful back gut bacteria. They decrease intestinal inflammation. Huge. We're going to talk about why that is in a second. They improve our micronutrient absorption. What does that mean? It means that you take the same, you take two people with different gut health, one that's an inflamed inflammatory gut system and the other with a healthy, the person with a healthier gut is going to absorb more nutrients, which means they're going to make more of the healthy volumes of hormones and neurotransmitters. Those are what regulate and help our body be healthy, critical. The other person's gonna absorb less, which means they go in a downward cycle, right? By reducing inflammation, maintaining healthy, healthy gut cell walls, long and short, guess what? We reduce feelings of stress and we lose weight. Awesome, right? When we eat more fiber and healthy fats, we decrease the intestinal inflammation, absorb more minerals for cellular repair and neurotransmitters. Absolutely critical, because remember, this is part two of what is metabolism. So by changing the nutrition, changing our foods we're eating to be foods that are high in fiber, we're going to solve for this piece. We're going to actually start to allow our body to fix the damage that may be there. And there's two types of fiber. There's two types of fiber that, and we're not going to get into all the, all the issues with different types and what they do and macro and prebiotics and all this stuff. But eating foods rich in soluble fiber may help you lose belly fat. Just that alone. Think about that. By shifting a diet to a food source that has more soluble fiber, you're literally going to lose belly fat. I'll show you why in a second. Soluble fat also helps keep your gut healthy, promotes overall fat loss by reducing your appetite. Second awesome piece, soluble fiber helps reduce the appetite. Awesome, right? Do you have options? Where do you get your fiber? Okay, you can get it from a company like doTERRA. I happen to love their products. I think they're awesome. They're very well made, extremely functional for what we're doing here in this process. But you can get them from in a supplement form, like in a pack. You can get them from your foods. You can simply choose to eat more foods that you know are high in fiber. Okay, those are choices. So how does it work? What is this really doing? So remember, we've now shifted our, our choice on our food group to high fiber foods. And, and you need a lot more fiber probably than you think. It's a lot. We go through this throughout the program, but you'll see. Soluble fiber slows digestion. Insoluble fiber speeds things up. Why is that important? The combination of the two allow for the intestinal wall to heal. That's critical. Second, it allows those bacterial colonies that are not or shouldn't be prevalent at high levels in, the, in, the, in your intestines to be passed out. So we're improving our waste. We're shifting things out of the body. That's absolutely critical. And here is the big piece. If you look at a traditional diet, meaning it's a fiber-rich diet, look at the cells at the bottom. See these little gray squares? The pink stuff is a mucosal barrier that's protective. And a fiber-rich diet creates, repairs, and builds that mucosal lining. If you have a fiber-deficient or low diet, those mucosal cells, these little gray cells, get destroyed. That starts to create this. Look at the bottom right part of this slide versus the left. Okay, the left part of this picture, that's healthy stuff. That's that mucosal barrier, contains the back, healthy bacteria, has concentrations of things in there. They're going to break down food that, that form our microbiome. Absolutely in, imperative that that's there. But look at the left. This is very important. Look at those cells, how they're tightly bound together. They're not destroyed along the cilia. They're all those little floaty things, the hair-like things at the top. They're able to do their job versus a diet that is very low in fiber that is very high in, in crummy sugars, for instance, processed carbs, processed foods, which are very inflammatory to the gut. Look at the mucosal lining. It's, it's just getting demolished. But look at what happens in between. Those cells start to break apart in their junction. They kind of separate. 
And so people with leaky gut syndrome, with gastritis, with irritable bowel disease, this is a big deal. This is a big deal. So can we repair it? Yes. Let's talk about how. Remember what we said is that by, in, by simply eating lots of fiber and healthy fats and certain essential oils, we can heal that mucosal barrier. That's critical because when we start to heal that, and I'll show you in a second what that means, we start to absorb nutrients at a much higher level, which gets rid of that negative cycle and puts us in a positive cycle of healthy living. These are some of the different essential oil compounds that have been shown to help. Turmeric, ginger, peppermint, cinnamon. There's a combination. This one's Slim and Sassy's from doTERRA. That's a combination of compounds they've put together, which has been shown to be very effective in clove, all of which function in different ways. Okay. Most of this is functioning to help to reduce inflammation in the actual intestinal tract itself, like ginger and turmeric and clove, those are very anti-inflammatory, which is awesome. Cinnamon's interesting because cinnamon helps to regulate our insulin release, which is going to help to maintain our, feel, our cravings or our feelings of hunger all the time because we don't go up with high lots of sugar, insulin tracks it, they come up together, they bind and boom, and they crash. Then the brain says, oh my gosh, I'm hungry again. Let me get more sugar. Then insulin has to come out again. So this cycle is crummy. That's why healthy proteins, fiber, and complex carbs are important because they maintain your sugar level like this. Then your insulin can kind of come up and just bounce around. That's much, much better on the body in every way, actually. Okay, so now let's start talking about the fat piece, the healthy fats. We're not talking about fats like from avocado or definitely not talking about fat from like your margarine or a stick of butter or something. I'm talking about these healthy fats that are critical for the body that have been proven to help lose weight. Here's how these work. Remember this intestinal lining. This is just one example because omega-3 functions throughout the entire body in different ways. Helps to repair and give nerves their functional little sheath that allows it to be conductive. Omega-3 helps to get rid of or reduce symptoms of, of uh, you know, that, that all sorts of body ache and pain, fibromyalgia, things like that. It's extremely important, but here's what these, this combination can do. When you have a high fiber diet together with omega-3, you're going to start to repair that mucosal barrier. And by doing so, we can start to absorb nutrients much more efficiently. The body gets rid of inflammation, which is awesome. And now in the, by doing that, we can start to create a system that is able to utilize its muscle mass more efficiently and effectively without pain. It's absolutely critical. Throughout the entire body, this is just an, an example. I know it seems kind of scary, but it's not. At the top is your omega-3, right? Your ALA, your EPA, and DHA. And those throughout the body are able to reduce, for instance, cytokines, or the proliferation of, of different cell structures that cause inflammation or pain. And that's critical because notice what we're not doing. We're not shutting down our immune system. We still want our immune system to work just fine, which is part of the inflammatory process. What we're doing is we're getting rid of those pieces that are too active, that are being told to fire off all the time because we have a messed up gut or we're eating too much sugar. Does that make sense? So omega-3 with fiber, actually reduces the eccentric or volume of this immune response and makes it manageable and normal and healthy. It's really important. And by reducing that inflammation throughout the body, there's random awesome side effects. Of course, it helps with reducing of triglyceride, you know, triglycerides in the body, especially if we reduce our sugar intake. It helps to actually break down and almost wash away some of these fat reserve, fat that starts to accumulate as in the form of plaques within our vessels. So we're helping to prevent heart disease. How awesome is that? And then of course, this picture on the top right, which is many, many of us, when you're feeling depressed, too much anxiety, stress, our body goes into this kind of systematic pain mode. Well, omega-3 with fiber actually helps to control that so the body no longer has 
those emotions. It actually literally feels like a new you. It's absolutely paramount, this combination of omega-3 and fatty and, and fiber. So number one, we have more energy at the cell level, okay, which is now going to pull some of the excess fat reserves out to be used because now it can make much more energy. How cool. By doing that, we have less inflammation. And in the gut, by using omega-3 and an increase in fiber, guess what? We've now decreased intestinal inflammation, which means we can now improve the use of our nutrients. And by using high fiber, we've increased the elimination of waste in a healthy way. So we've kind of gone full circle through the metabolism process. And guess what that does? By decreasing inflammation, we are able to increase our muscle usage and volume. We're actually able to increase our muscle mass, which is awesome, which increases our metabolism, which increases weight loss. You see how cool this is? By doing these things and following this regimen, you will decrease inflammation and by default through this process, lose weight. Maintain healthy weight. Your body will feel so much better. That is awesome, right? This presentation is an example of how choices that we make can drastically change our lives. Let's do it together. You have the right to be and feel amazing. Go for it. Step up and crush it.